All right, so as we've been told, we do have the people here that we were expecting to see. So let me first bring out uh, this gentleman uh, was my best buddy on the show. He helped me out in the beginning when the Ensign Kid was green as green can be. Uh, but throughout time, uh, Tom Paris and Ensign Kim developed an excellent rapport with each other. Um, and I hold him as one of my close friends in life also. Please, a warm round of applause for Robbie Duncan. Did you guys know I'm from Atlanta? Hello! I, I've never done this show before, and I'm from here. I did too. This is weird. I think we should all just have a big group dog pile right now. A little bonding moment. Nice to see you guys. What? Did I interrupt something? I'm wondering if you're a hologram because this is three years in a row you were unable to make it. Finally, he's here, everybody. Okay, Eric, we've got big work to do. There's someone very special. Just, just introduce her. You want to sit down right here? Okay. Who? Kate Bell. Who? Why? Is Kate Bell in the audience at all? Kate Bell? Over there. Is that your hand up there? Okay. Raise your hand up again for RJ to see you. Okay. All right. Without further ado, uh, I'd love to bring out the captain from our show, uh, Captain Catherine Janeway. I'm very happy. 
me, thank you. Because you look very well. I do? Of course, you were quite handsome when I first met you, as were you, Winston Kim. I was very young. A couple of real numbers, yeah. But you, you have maintained your beauty. Oh, thank you. Maybe they maintained your beauty. But you have, now, just to say that you have it, Mr. Paris. <laughs> but we were talking coming over about something that happened on the ship. I think you'll remember, too, Gary. Yes. We were lost at the Delta Park, right? Yes, I know, I know, I missed the gas station, it's all my fault. <laughs> but you know, we're lost for seven years, that's a long time, and you know that we were starving to death. But oddly enough, the Voyager crew just kept expanding. <laughs> we kept getting these scripts about, go down to hydroponics, get those beans, get those things, we have to survive, we're starving, starving, and then Jacoby would be smashing onto the bridge. You will yeah, be with, each year we'd have to go in for costume fitting <laughs> at the beginning of the year, and every year they'd just let it out a little bit more. The essence of mortification. Um, girls end up showing up in our trailers. Remember that? We were forced to wear girls. Yeah, the man I, I, oh, you were forced. We were told. It was part of my contract. <laughs> and smashing my bosoms in. Unlike another Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, whatever you say. Why don't you just tell them the truth about your books and what you did? <laughs> Rob, you Kate, Kate, Kate was just teasing me because, you know, I sat down front. And by the way, you know, I, I was driving the lost ship, so I probably had a little to do with us not getting home. But um, I would sit down front, and Kate would have these long speeches. You'd be walking around the bridge, philosophizing about <laughs> The camera was photographing behind me, so I wasn't in the shot. So I, I developed a habit of reading books down front. And sometimes wouldn't quite be uh, paying attention to No, with your feet up on the, on the console, with your sticky socks. Very true, but yes. But if he did have lines, it was always a, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's about it. You know, you were so positive until the end. Yes, ma'am. We had Chicote going. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't even go there. We don't need to go with Chicote, but no, we already know about that. Yeah. Yes, Rob. There's children in the audience. You can't say that things Chicote said. <laughs> South, and I was raised to say yes, ma'am. Right, that's where it came from. I, I get it, yes, ma'am. It's a southern thing. It's, yeah, it's a southern thing. Yeah. Now, back to our weight issues. Kate, did you know this happened? In the episode called Demon, Robbie and I were on this alien planet where we're wearing our spacesuits, and we come across this liquid pool of liquid, whatever, and I touch it, and this liquid gets into my suit, so all of a sudden you hear the computer say, life support is ending in one minute, and so then Robbie is helping me back to the shuttle, and then his life support gets compromised, and the writers, to get us back for anything they saw was wrong, such as our excessive weight, they wrote in the actual script where Robbie goes, do me a favor, and I go, what's that? If we make it back alive, Harry, promise me that you'll work out. These were the lines, dude. They wrote this. I called up Brandon Braga, Kate, and I said, how dare you put this in the script? And he said, well, if you and McNeil continue on your eating ways, we'll have to change the name of the show to Star Trek Voyager Pigs in Space. Let's talk about the more serious, dignified aspects of it. Yes. 
doing something is like, no, I'm Anson Kim. And I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eric was so proud. I was so happy. I've never been more happy for my tells that story wherever you go. Every <laughs> We had a great time, you guys. We did. There were some moments, of course, because we worked hard. Well, yeah. some, 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 some of you worked hard. Look, we goofed around a lot, all right? We did the river dance for you. Do you remember that? All four of us. Yes, and then, yes. We were always trying to amuse. We were trying to amuse her. She was like the queen, and we were the court jesters. Look at this. We can dance. It's cute. I also think the crew, we, we, we had so much fun. The cast of Voyager, we had so much fun. But by the end, the crew was like, just say the words. <laughs> they were really tired of our... We, he had emerged from a coma and went to which he'd slipped for five years. Yes. <laughs> and he did Burt Lancaster for four hours. Yeah, he went. Yeah. Yeah, Beltran does incredible impressions. And you do the river dance? We did the river dance. The combat is toss. Uh, our combat is were actually in plastic attached by Velcro. So one day I walk up to McNeil and I grab it, take it off, and I stand back and I threw it and it landed and stuck back on. So then. <laughs> Step back a little further, I do the same thing. And Kate's watching the whole thing, just let me try, let me try. <laughs> she did it too. What? They just jump in. Is that even close? Just tell me. How horrifying. It's only because I love you, you know that. That's why I do that accent. Oh, yes, it feels like deep love. <laughs> I know, we do. That I gave you your directorial date. Yes. You're, I gave him his first shot, so... She did. Tell me. Kate, Kate, Kate uh, you know, when we first started in Voyager, I wanted to direct, and um, and uh, I, I worked very hard at surfing and things like that. The second season, um, there was an opportunity a slot opened up, and Kate, it was a big episode for Kate. And they Sacred were like, Ground. Sacred Ground was the episode. And they needed a director, and I know Kate really supported me when the producers were considering me to direct that slot. She stepped up and really supported me uh, directing, particularly Netflix. She pushed for me. I paid. <laughs> and then I paid Kate. <laughs> but uh, it was a great experience. I had a great time. Yeah, it was a lot. And then you were off to the races. You're a natural. Great, great director. Great, great gambler. Now, are there any questions? You want my hand? Yes, yes money. Well, oh, there he is over there. Hello, Bennett. Wave. Bennett. Come oh. in, Joey. Where are you? Wave. Oh, we could just spend hours to stay. So we keep talking and talking. We would like to take a couple of questions if you have any. Do you have There's any? There's some microphones here. There's a mic here. A mic right here. So just come on up to the mic. There you are. Yes. Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, my question's for Kate. Um, what is your opinion on the Flemeth phenomenon? <laughs> and is there any uh, word on if there's going to be a Dragon Age 3 with you in it? Well, it went off the charts. You know that, don't you? Pardon? It's a hugely successful video game. Yes, and that's why I'm asking about the Flemeth phenomenon. Yeah, I, I, I think I've just I stepped into a, a puddle of real honey there. For, for, and, and the foremost, the reason is because there's no camera. The, the liberty and the joy of just being in a, a booth with an engineer and a voice that you're making up from the bowels of hell <laughs> is nothing but bliss. And, and, that she, and that she could emerge was uh, a great thing. Do you guys do voiceovers? This is a video game I did. Did you ever see it? No. Dragon Age. And it's It is coming. I'll let you know. <laughs> Kate, while we were on the show, I remember Kate came up to me one day and she said, Garrett, <laughs> this is how you set yourself up. Remember, voiceovers. That's the you told me that even back then. Cartoon voiceovers. I told you like that. Don't worry, I, you know, we are the most in an uncharted part of the universe. No kidding. 
Okay, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Kate, you are my favorite captain. You are my captain. <laughs>
Do I remember you? Don't you? 
to own that seat, and more importantly, to win this incredibly discerning audience, whose intelligence I have come to understand is very rare indeed. The love of science fiction and the knowledge of science fiction is something very um, rare, and that is what is shared in this room. And that's what I learned in my seven years. And uh, having made that kind of television history, and I think influencing women in science. And I'll end by saying this, I know. I mean, I, I know what my Hogan will say. I'm one of those. Patrick Stewart and I have laughed about it. Kate Mulgrew, Captain Janeway, who dies in the correct quadrant, right? <laughs> But I say, great, what better over than I have? So, there you go. Thank you so much, Tommy. Hi, it's a pleasure being here speaking with you all. I never thought I'd ever have this opportunity. My question first is for Kate. How has the transition been from saying commission denied on the way to saying commission denied on NTS of SES and Ely? Do you ever think that whatever happened, that Amy would ever go from just Captain J. Wade to just, you know, to free out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and my, my other question is also for you all. Let down by the last episode how you all didn't get together and reunite with your families and experience your loved ones once again. Was yes, anyone all. let down by that last Ask it then, darling. I had, I had, I had There's terrible controversy about Endgame. It's the only way it could go down. It had to wrap up. They had this with all good things as well. The Admiral went down with the ship, the Captain went on. Chakotay wrapped it up with Seven of Nine, although I think that was their first day. <laughs> you and Torres have all been married, right? Everything was, if not neatly wrapped up, wrapped up. And the only way you can do seven years is because you cannot possibly do it to everyone's satisfaction. Awesome. It's a hero things to do it yeah, anyway. It is, it is tough. Huh. Okay, if I was Rick Berman, this is what I would have done. I felt the first hour of Endgame was great. The second hour wrapped it up way too quickly. We didn't even set, set foot on Earth. So, totally I would have did the first hour of Endgame, and at the end of that, I would have said to be continued at a theater near you. The two hours. raised his hand and did the old age makeup. Nobody else did it except for me. That kind of pissed me off. But that's okay. That's Tuvok. Tuvok. Did he die at all? I did. He died at all. Oh, he did very little because it was a pretty young yeah. star on that week. I did. Even though he was a little old. Yes. May I ask you a question, sir? Do you always carry that gun when you're wearing that t-shirt? <laughs> Because, you know, people want to know, Kate, what happened to your dog? What happened to your relationship with Mark? Yeah. Well, he dumped me. You all hit there, he dumped me. Oh, he dumped you on the show, oh, really? No. Okay. But then you don't change just because you're in the Delta Club. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. When did it premiere? When? This past Monday. It's not 
Sunday, Monday? I guess. I guess Sunday. you're too busy doing junk. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, ask your question. Another question is for Robbie and Garrett. What's, the, what's your favorite practical joke that your characters play on Voyager? Oh, yes. Let's give them the truth serum. <laughs> Robbie, you can it, it, it have to either do with fart or boogers or yes. something like that. Well, it's okay. We this thing went on. I call I, I, I call it the fart wars. Is what I call it. There was a there was a fart war, and it was literally it was Tim Ross, Ethan Phillips, and Robbie McNeil that yeah, were the main absolutely. countries in the fart wars. And I was just there in front of the camera. So what they would do is Robbie or actually Tim Ross would walk from tactical over to. And he'd go, hey, Bubba, I got something for you. And I said, yeah, what's that? He'd turn around and release gas and walk away. It was awesome. Robbie. It was awesome. Yep. Oh, yeah. But, but Robbie did it. I felt no like that. <laughs> the way Robbie did it was Robbie actually came into my trailer. He knocked on the door. I said, yeah. He walks in. He turns around, releases gas right in my face, and closes the door behind me as he walks out. You remember doing that? Yeah, I'm sure I did. Yeah, that was great. So I was an innocent victim of Far Wars, but that's more probably his big There are casualties in a fair dude. <laughs> the flatulence was so severe that I went to Rick Berman on my knees in the end of the fifth season and said, Get us home now. <laughs> Why do boys think that is so funny? Farts are the best thing ever invented. Girls don't think it is funny. Do you know you can light farts too, by the way? I've done it. It, it's not a it's not an urban legend. You can light it. Right, it's a blue good. light. That's good. Why don't you come forward? Thin blue. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Grant. Yes. Yes. Do you like that outfit, Kate? Please wear. Please do. I have that same. I have that same outfit. Robbie, you have the same getup, don't you? I have the same outfit. That is so weird. Robbie wore that on a plane coming in, actually. The exact same thing. Could you turn around? Just show everybody what you got. You want to know how smart we are? Wait, no. Lieutenant Harris, what are in those pou pouches? <laughs> what are in those pouches? Oh, Every one of those, those pouches. Talk about <laughs> No, there's super secret magic things in those pouches. I can't tell you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> I have another question for you. How many sit-ups do you do every day? <laughs> Not every day, like three times a week. How many? Three times a week I do that. That's it? I do it three times a week. That doesn't happen to me. You and I. Okay, maybe probably three times a year you do that. Sorry. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. All right. Oh, no, you are an exercise maniac, aren't you? Crazy. I'm sorry. What is your question? <laughs> Listen, babies aside. Lizard babies aside, uh, what do you guys feel with the subtext of the Paris J Way relationship? Because I always felt there was something where she's constantly leaning over him, and uh, I always felt there was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You picked up on it, didn't you? We tried. We tried to conceal. <laughs> but she can't find it. Here's the subtext. Yes, yeah, so we'll go to that nebula. What are you reading? Is it good? What are you <laughs> Yes, we did have a special relationship. Yes, it was very special. <laughs> no, you know what's funny is um, back when, before the show had started, I remember seeing the breakdowns for these characters, and it had suggested uh, breakdowns. Breakdowns are what the studio puts out to all the agents and casting directors that will describe the kind of character they're looking for so the agents can uh, suggest the right kind of actor. So in the breakdowns I looked at, after I'd already gotten the part, it said something like, they were looking for a uh, Harrison Ford type for Tom Paris. They could be a potential. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel the same way. Trust me. Who, uh, who could be a potential love interest for this captain? 
And that was in the breakdown. Well, they never really wrote that. Well, and after it was explained to my agents that they were looking for an Angelina Jolie type for Jane. <laughs> and but we're Celts. That's why we got along. Yeah. We're Celts. Yeah. You know what that means, right? Yes, I think you do. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> no, we, uh, I think because Kate and I, because we knew each other so well, and uh, because the doors of our trailers face each other, and we knew everything about each other's lives, I think a lot of that comes off just in, in the way the scenes are played, even if they don't write it. I mean, they never really wrote a romance with our characters. They never wrote no, no. it. They never did, but I think there was just a... A great connection. Yeah, there was a great, great. camaraderie. And there the still scene. is. Absolutely. We never had a bad word once in seven years. Not once. No. So if your trailers were not next to each other, you would not as be uh, you wouldn't be as good friends. You certainly wouldn't be. <laughs> Warehouse 13, Warehouse 13, Warehouse 13. Careful, there were. It's good. Thank you. Thank you for your thank question. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your outfit. Thank you for everything. <laughs> thank you for my abdominal work. <laughs> my, my question is for the incomparable Miss Mulgrew. The incomparable... Remember that word, gentlemen. <laughs> Use it, a fabrication. Yes? Who's kept for an ask of nations I've long admired? Uh, it's, it's really a flattery disguise with the question, but I, 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 um, I was sort of wondering how you came by your diction, which you seems so very well trained and, and expertly uh, administered, and what sort of opinions, if any, you have on vocal training in the profession. Uh, I suppose I'm a little affected. <laughs> I was born and raised in Dubuque, Ohio, but my mother is very Eastern. And my mother talks a little bit like that, so you know what I mean? They all talk like that, sort of, when they go to Mount Holyoke and that's not. So I was raised here in Katie, you have to do it this way, and you're going to be wonderful actors, the only way to be a musician, you know? So I sort of grew up like that, and then I sort of refined it, and now I'm really impossible. <laughs> I think you have to have good diction, but it's completely out of now. Nobody actually, nobody, nobody likes it. Nobody likes it anymore. I like it. I love Thank it. Thank you. And I like it also. And I like it too. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, ma'am. Did you dismiss everybody? No. Why? I think we have five minutes. We're running out of time. There's, a, there's the, uh, the five, so five minutes. All those girls. Yeah. yeah. That's not a girl. keep going. Is there another? Weekend. We've only started this party before. Right here. Let me, let me, yes. let me say this, and I want you guys to, to jump in here. <laughs> Did you win? Um, <laughs> Voyager, all Star Trek requires a highly stylized kind of acting. Do you or do you not agree? They wanted something that's, I don't want to say bigger, look at Patrick Stewart, a superb Shakespearean actor, classical, right? And, and, and Bill, and it's, it has that sort of bigger than life quality. And I think they, in Jane Way, uh, the way she spoke was very much a part of it. Um, and that's what elevated it. It wasn't supposed to be lazy. Our red alert, we gotta go. It looks like there's a vortex out there. It wouldn't have worked, right? It would have been interesting that way. I think there's a, a, a very difficult sort of balance of tones because it needed a bit of a theatrical kind of, a regal sort of polish to it, a military sort of polish, but yet it needed, um, it needed to be uh, not, not so broad that it felt uh, silly. And without becoming impossibly esoteric, it needed an understanding of something almost beyond the imagination. So through that, of articulation, the audience had to believe that this was something uh, fantastic but rooted in absolute possibility. And as an actress, I would like to say 
<laughs> and then you just get to argue and pay down, which is what you love to do. Um, I think that that's what actors should do. If they do it well, that's what they should do. Uh, reality TV is, is taking us down to this level of, of utter sameness. Don't you want to be elevated? Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank we'll see you, you next weekend.